Hello guys and welcome to a new Steel Division video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you game one in a best of three between Herr Robert and Walther in the lower bracket round one of Chicken Dew's European tournament. And in this one we're seeing Odon with Herr Robert taking out the 15th infantry Scots on the Allied side and on the Axis side Walther with the 91st Luftlander. So we've seen the 91st Luftlander played on this map previously by Chicken Dew himself and it went okay for the start of the game but later on he felt under pressure from those armoured units and they ended up breaking through pretty hard. I feel like there's a potential for that happening here in this game because the armour out of the side of the 15th Infantry Scots is actually a lot harder to deal with in this game than it was for the Guard's armour to deal with under Chicken Juice command of the 91st Luftlander. So, we're going to be seeing things like Churchill 7s with 15 front armour, we've got things like AVREs with 15 front armour, we've also got 1,200 metre range engagement from Churchill 5s, and just a plethora of like infantry availability from the 15th Infantry Scots. On the side of the 91st Luftlander, it's going to be all about the air dominance again. We need to see those HS129 B3s get kills onto the 15 uh, armor targets, so Churchill 7s and AVREs. They need to go down to HS129s, or they can either be killed by Fortune Pans Abwehrs or maybe smoke play with uh, Falschmjägers. But something that I mentioned before was that on the 91st Luftlander, the command infantry does not have smoke grenades, so it's actually a lot harder to play around smoke and like AT with smoke on the 91st Luftlander division than it is with other divisions, because you have to have a mortar exclusively to do so. Anyway, let's have a look at some of the units that are going down. It looks like there's gonna be an AT gun for the top side, We've got a cubal up there with the MG. We have some flamethrowers, some Falsham Flammenwerfer, very nice. Um, we've got Falsham Jaegers, um, Ersatztruppen, and also some recon there, possibly Falsham Panzerabwehr. I would hope it is, because they are very, very strong units. Also, Ersatz and Falsham Jaegers a little bit further down. For the mid, I think we might see the Pack 40 play again. A Pack 40 placed into this tree line is really, really nice can shoot all the way up the road because of the way that the road slightly bends um, going into these buildings. Like if I show you, it slightly bends, which means that if you put a pack 40 here, you have a direct line of sight all the way down into the town and maybe you can snipe an infantry unit or two before they unload. And that definitely gives you an advantage going into a town engagement further up if you attempt to do so. So we'll have to see if uh, Walther goes for that. On the bottom side, it's going to be hopefully more propulsion pans ab there with a couple of units of Urzats. We've got the command infantry in there with an MG, and also, what is this? I have no idea what that is. A unit that is not used very often at all. <laughs> we'll have to wait and see when it's unloaded. Either way, on the bottom side, we have three units of rifles, two units of rifles heading into this building with command. We have multiple units of infantry heading to the center. This is the more elite rifles taking up the town in the center with an AVRE and two units of rifles with command heading up to the top side. Barely any AT coming out from here, Robert, at the start. And I guess he doesn't really need it. The 91st Luflander isn't really well known for their armored play. I think the only armor that they can really bring in is either Panzer 35s or the Stur 42 in phase A. And generally they're not incredibly threatening and you can react to them quite quickly if you need to. Now it looked like the propulsion Panzer up there did get a Panzer Shrek shot towards the rifles before they unloaded, which means they've unloaded in the sight of Volschimegas, Erzats, and even an MG34. Those guys need to fall back sooner than later, that's for sure. AVREs slowly approaching towards the center and it looks like these rifles are making a lot of ground on the bottom side. These command carriers, they can definitely help out a lot against things like Urzat Strupen, and so far, so good. Let's have a look at what this was. It was actually an FK-39 um, that was brought in 
at the start. It's going to be using its uh, 9 HE at range to engage these rifles. If a tank comes into range of it, it can then engage with its 11 AP um, armor piercing shells. But that AVRE there, very quickly dispatching of the MG34, and there just isn't going to be too much that uh, Walther can do about this AVRE, honestly. Uh, best bet is for him to try and pin it down with his artillery and then possibly get a shot off with the pack 36 uh, here. He can use a 300 meter range 20 AP rocket in order to find a kill possibly. But that's a long shot for sure. And on the bottom side in the meantime, rifles have found and killed off the Fulshan Panzer Abwehr. These rifles aren't doing too bad against the Ersatz either. And all that's going to do is leave a simple Fulshan Führer on the bottom side to deal with all of this infantry. And infantry avail availability already overwhelming Walther across the board, except from on, on this top side. It seems as though these units of this unit of rifle managed to fall back and got into the tree line. This one is now being chewed up by the Fulshamegas. Rifle leader has already managed to get out of there. And we do see a 2-inch carrier already coming in. There's also a Churchill 5 now on the way, though. And uh, that will definitely help open up the top side. It will nullify this pack 36 very quickly. And uh, then the infantry is just going to be mincemeat. All right, we do see the rifles trying to make an advance here. Pack 36 is on hold fire. I like this a lot. As long as it doesn't get spotted, this Pack 36 has a chance of killing the AVRE. Very slim chance, as it has to basically kill it with the first shot or it dies. But still a chance nonetheless. And killing an AVRE early on is actually a pretty big blow to the 15th Infantry Scots. Now, Erzats have arrived on the bottom side of the map with the Volsham uh, Jaeger. There's no command here because he already has one holding the front line. Got to keep that on return fire though so it doesn't reveal itself to the rifles advancing. That's very important indeed. And it's nice to see that Walther understands when he needs to put his units on to return fire as it is definitely going to help him hold the line for as long as possible. On this top side though, 2 inch carrier going to be hitting these Erzats pretty hard. Fulshan Panzer Abwehr, are they going to get spotted? That is the question. They are indeed. Two inch carriers going to get out of there. Possibly still get shot at by the Fulshan Panzer Abwehr. We'll have to wait and see. They've got into the tree line. Yep, two inch carrier goes down. Nice job by Walther to pick that off. AVRE is moving up, but actually onto the wrong side of the town. This is tragic for Robert here, or for Walther, sorry, because. Oh no, <laughs> it looks like the rifles got too close, spotted the Pack 36 Pack 36 is dead. Even with 5 AP at that range, an AVRE still has like 10 side armor, so things is not going to end well there. Oh, that's such a shame. But just the chance that Robert there moved that to the bottom side of the town meant it was never going to be in 300 meter range anyway, and that is just tragic. So now Volsham Jaegers, Erzatz Truppen, going to be engaging these rifles. But there is a command carrier, and that's a two-star command carrier. It can actually do quite a lot of damage. has quite high lethality. So we'll see if that comes into effect. This Churchill currently not in a very good position. If it was in this orchard, would definitely be able to hit this MG34 right now and force back a lot of this infantry. These Volsham Panzer Abwehr are pretty much the only chance that uh, Walther has to kill this Churchill 5 early on in the game unless he decides to purchase in a HS129 but it looks like his points so far have gone towards the Stur 42 which is a pretty nice response allows him to deal with the enemy rifles easier and he's also now bringing in a Panzerstreck squad to try and deal with the AVRE I like Walther's thinking I just think that so far the division mismatch has just really shown. Like the only way of dealing with the AVRE really early on is a HS129. And saving for that is incredibly risky. So when your best bet at killing this AVRE is a HS129 that's basically pretty risky to bring in in the first place, you, you're not you're not going to do very well. Oh. 
Panzerfaust took a shot at the AVRE, did not find the kill. AVRE is now going to be able to aim and fire back. Fulsham Jaeger going to be going for it again. I don't think they're going to get in range, are they? Oh, AVRE finds the shot. Boom. Goodbye, Fulsham Jaeger squad. Those AVREs are absolutely dire to deal with when you don't have any strong counters to them. I guess a lack of maybe the pack 40 in the mid or even a Panzerschreck accompanying the infantry in this area really allowed this AVRE to just break through the mid without bumping into any AT. And on the top side it looks like the Fulsham Panzer Abwehr have been taken out so now there's Churchill 5 able to stop any units in this tree line from being effective. There's also a Bofors here now. So combined Bofors and Churchill 5 fire is just going to pin down those Erzats very quickly. Second Bofors here as well. And well, it looks like Walther identifies that he needs to use a HS129 now to kill the AVRE. He has managed to pin it down. His Panzer Shrek misses though. Oh, this is just painful to watch. All the attempts. Come on, Panzer Shrek. He got it. <laughs> nice. Okay, AVRE down. He can take a sigh of relief for that. He's only behind by 1% territory. With his pressure in the top side of the map, he's not allowing Herr Robert to actually find too much of a lead. His Panzer Shrek does die, but that was like 100% worth it. And his HS129 is still alive, so that's fantastic as well. Volchum Fjöre Ulig does manage to take out one of the rifle squads. In the bottom side, these Erzatz troop and holding on to the ground for now. There is a Panzer 39 heading towards the town, and I think that's a really nice choice now that the AVRE is dead. AVREs can actually kill Panzer 39s um, with their HE main gun, and um, that's something that he would have otherwise had to be careful of. But now with the AVRE gone, this Panzer 39 can help clean up these command carriers and then put down pressure onto the rifles as he then pushes back with his own infantry, which you can see being reinforced now on the right side. So this Panzer 39 um, going to be fast moving to hopefully deal with this command carrier, but it looks like it's a little late to save Ulig. Ulig going to get mown down by the brain carrier and these rifles. On the top side, Erzatz. Jumping into the tree line there. Looks like the Fulsham Jaegers are going to as well. We'll put on return fire though for now. I think what Walther's trying to do is just keep the front line forwards as much as he can to deny as much territory to Herr Robert as he can. And that's very important. And so far he's doing a decent job of that with his units being on return fire. Stur 42 is going to open up onto these rifles. And that's really going to help him clean those out of those buildings as soon as his Urzats arrive. But there is now a honey on the way. And this honey is actually pretty scary because it's a, it's a chance that this honey can basically kill the Stier 42. At close range, there's a chance of it doing so. We see Spitfire Mark 9 come in. That's going to bomb the top side. Ends up hitting the Flammeverve here and this infantry. But not doing too much damage, just pinning them all down. FK-39 is going to be opening up again, this time onto the Churchill 5. It looks like Walther wants to delay the push of that Churchill 5 for as long as possible. Ooh, Honey there going to be killing off. Was that a Fallschirmjäger unit on the main road for free? That, If that was a Fallschirmjäger, that was a big mistake there from Walther allowing that to happen. And this Honey now, at this range... What range is that, like 700 meters? It's got like 10 AP versus the Stier 42, so it still can't really penetrate at that range. Stier 42 is just going to have to make that honey fall back. He might be able to get the FK-39 into line of sight and then get a kill shot onto that. That would be a nice thing to do right now, for sure. He's turned off the HE, so the only thing this FK can fire right now is the AP, but um, the FK has currently stopped and isn't moving forwards. That's odd. Why would you then put it onto AP and then not use it? Not sure. Anyway, six pounder has been spotted and that's going to be engaged upon by the Ersatz Troopen. 
Stiff 42's got to be careful not to get in range of that. And even if he does come around the corner to engage the, the six pounder, he'll then get side shot by the honey. So Walther just can't go for that right now. And on this bottom side, the six pounder does find the kill there. So we've moved into phase B. Walther's going to be bringing in some more units here with the Stug 3. These could either be, um, well, they're probably pioneers, I would assume. On the top side, both of the Urzats got themselves surrendered, but they're still the Falschen Flammenwerfer and the Falschen Jäger. So the rifles moving into that tree line there are just going to get killed by the flames. Yep, they're gone. Flammenwerfer paying itself off. Very nice indeed. FK39 going to be now using its HE to try and kill off this six pounder. At that close range, the velocity of those shells means that he will be able to hit the six pounder quite accurately and get the kill, which he does. And that's going to allow now the Stur 42 to move up and help support his Erzats against these rifles. But you can see Herr Robert has now purchased in a Churchill 6. And this Churchill 6, uh, again, just becomes an issue once again for Walther to deal with, especially with the Stur 42 going down. Looks like the honey there popped out of that range and uh, managed to find itself the kill. The uh, FK 39 still not being used as an AT gun, which surprises me a lot. H129 does come in, gets forced to fall back by the Bofors here, manages to get the track wheel destroy onto the honey and the shooter wounded. That's going to disable that honey and stop it from moving. He can keep that pin down and then engage it with the Stug 3. That would be a nice idea indeed. But as you can see on the top side, both the Falschim Flammenwerfer and the Falschim Jäger have been killed off. That Spitfire bomber coming in, leading the charge for those rifles and now the Churchill 5's broke through entirely massive salience opened up plus two for Herr Robert and well it seems as though the FK-39 is having a go at the Churchill 7 or 6 sorry can it actually find the kill though no it cannot FK-39 is going to get itself pinned down Churchill 6 does have 5 HE on its main gun and 8 on its base of machine gun so, going to make short work of infantry as well. These were indeed pioneers out of Walther. But they aren't exactly in the prime position right now. As they only have one machine gun to engage from range. And that's not exactly what they want to be doing versus the Churchill here. What I would like to see is probably a Panzerstreck. And maybe just some recon. Because I feel like Walther can't really see what he's up against right now. Yeah, you definitely can't see any infantry. On this top side, the Pack 38's in range to engage the Churchill 5, but it needs a direct hit if it wants to make a difference up there. It seems as though it's not going to. Pack 38's being put onto return fire, going to try and get out of line of sight, is not going to make it. Direct hit, Pack 38 goes down. Marder 2 has been purchased from Walther, and I like the purchase of the Marder 2. Um, definitely gives him a chance of killing the Churchill 5 at range. So I'll be looking forward to that engagement. Mortar though, plus the honey, going to finish off the FK-39. And that's no more threat for Herr Robert. Robert's now going to be running forwards with rifles. And Walther's going to surrender. And after looking at how little units Walther had left on the map there, it's no surprise. After 15 minutes and 18 seconds... Herr Robert is going to be the victor with 940 kills to 390 losses. Very nice KD there for such a short amount of time. Really did a lot of damage. That AVRE really paying off. And I think honestly, Herr Robert knew the matchup quite well and took advantage of that because there just wasn't enough units that Walther had to be able to counter the AVRE. And the ones that he did have were unreliable at best. We saw the Panzerfaust get in range and miss. We saw the Panzerschreck get in range and miss. It managed to kill it eventually, but only after the HS129 was purchased, which then pinned down the AVRE. And the HS129, I think, probably should have been purchased earlier on, as soon as he saw an AVRE. That's like the first thing that I would do. If I saw an AVRE, HS129, all the way. It's the only chance that you have to kill that early enough for it not to make too much of a difference in phase A. 
Unfortunately, AVRE didn't get many kills, but the presence of it allowed the rest of the units to charge forwards. And look at the rifles here picking up Panzer Abwehr, two units of Erzatz trooping in the bottom side. These command carriers chewed through units. Like, especially on the bottom, again, three units of Erzatz and Ulig going down. The lethality of these command carriers is really, really nice. And again, Herobit took good advantage of that. In the top side, the purchase of the Churchill 5 was perfect. Stopped the advance of the Pack 36 and all of the infantry up there. We saw the Honey come in. That was microed very nicely to kill the Stur 42 at close range. So across the board, nice plays from Herr Robert. On the other side, Walther just getting unlucky. This Panzer Shrek took way too long to kill the AVRE. It would have probably been nice to have a maybe a Fulsion Panzer Abwehr or even a Panzer Shrek um, in well, on the main road from the start of the game, because then when the AVRE pushed through the town, it would have bumped into the Panzer Shrek straight away and probably got itself killed. But not the case in this one. The FK-39 wasn't necessarily microed properly and therefore wasn't able to utilize its AP to kill the Honey sooner, which would have prevented the kill onto the Stur 42. So as much as there was good plays out of Herr Albert, I think there was quite a few mistakes out of Walther in this game that led to him being overrun by the high armored units from the 15th Infantry Scots. And that's basically it. So, interesting first game. Um, we'll have to see if Walther can bring it back in the second one to make this a full best of three. Those are the games that I, or series that I love. Um, just when you see it go back and forth and then you have like an epic last game where it like comes down to the wire. That's really, really what I'm looking forward to. So, hopefully you guys are too. Thanks for watching and I'll see you then. Goodbye.